The AK-12 is a devolution of the AK family. It fails at modernization goals for the AK-74M and the AK-100 series of rifles. As Russia's next generation standard weapon, the AK-12 functions as other AKs would in a non-combat environment. But we've found that the AK-12 fails to achieve key modernization goals, fails to adapt to Russian military logistics, and has major potential to detract from a soldier's combat effectiveness under the typical Russian military doctrine. Let's be clear. This is not a political video against Russia, but rather an apolitical technical take on the AK-12 weapon system, and we've made fun of NATO plenty on their PDW project in the past. While the AK-12 inherits the AK-74's pedigree, these AK-12 modernized features can only go so far in hiding a long list of undesirable traits. A point to remember as you watch this video is that Russia has a great amount of corrosive 7N6 Type 5.45 ammunition in their inventory, and it's unmarked. Corrosive ammunition, which the primer compound would corrode the ferrous or steel internals of a firearm if not cleaned in a timely fashion. In this episode, we'll go deep into why the AK-12 is an exceedingly poor fit for the Russian military and potentially one of the biggest steps back of the Kalashnikov family. But for now, welcome to Nine Hole Reviews, and let's get on with it. The AK-12 project started its life as the initial Zlobin AK-12 concept, a drastically different look and the concept that the Russian government tested and rejected for reliability and budgetary reasons. Through a series of political and fiscal decision, the current rifle is manufactured after the AK-400 concept rifle. We have sources within who indicate that the AK-400 prototype is actually the exact same non-adjustable gas, long-stroke gas piston system as the current AK-12. Unlike previous videos where some believe that Larry Vickers' translator had misled him to present it as an adjustable gas, short stroke gas piston system. So back to the AK-12. This was a painstakingly difficult recreation made by Zach, Brandon Herrera's lead gunsmith, who used a D-mill AK-12 kit and a cold hammer forged chrome line barrel with correct contours. You can see details from the Grau Index markings 6P70 to the correct font selector markings and the original dot matrix style serial number. The departures from the AK-74 can be seen, although internally the AK-12 functions largely like an AK-74 with interchangeable magazines. Externally, the stock folds and collapses. The dust cover supports a direct mounting of optics with a latch system. The sights are pushed back and also pulled into the gas block, and yes, the welds all look like this on the AK-12. The magazine has undergone a major update with a round count and a loaded magazine indicator. The polymer front handguards are entirely free floated and the gas tube is no longer removable like the traditional AK design. And the muzzle device is no longer threaded. It can be quickly pulled off for a quick access presumably to clean. So on paper, the current AK-12 boasts an impressively improved feature set, a significant departure from the old AK-74M. But how do they actually fare? I think the rifle itself uh, performs as any AK-74M uh, out there would, which is certainly got high reliability, good combat accuracy, uh, but it seems to be a, what we could say if we're on harsher terms, a bucket of disappointments. One, I understand what they're doing with the folding stock mechanism. It's slightly changed in a sense that the AK-74s have a stock hook to hook the stock when it's folded, which the AK-12 deletes that and instead uses a hinge mechanism here to lock out 
the stock when it's in collapsed position. The problem with this, if you're working mechanized or anything and, and when you need the stock collapsed or folded the most, right here, it opens itself to where there is a channel for things to slide in. Let's say if there's a seat belt, slide in here and to jam yourself and snag yourself shut. I see that as a vulnerability in the system and the hook design is actually better to have it tight to the system itself. Now, can it be trimmed? Yes, of course, but I don't think that's going to happen from factory. Once the stock is open, you do have a collapsing mechanism, which echoes a lot of your modernized AKs and one of the big things that even Josh and I uh, work on. Now, but the problem is they have the, uh, what we call a Magpul inspired cup which is fine uh, because now they are trying to address an issue to where the previous AK-74s, they have the sling loop on, fixed on one side and this side that you could like switch it between two sides. The problem with this is, especially if it's collapsed, this really runs into your fingers to where when you're trying to just grab it real quick, you end up grabbing the sling. Now, even if you pull it backwards, the sling still gets somewhat in the way. Um, and of course you cannot fold it well if it's on the shooter side. Um, the other thing, your safety has to come all the way down which disrupts your trigger finger dropping down to where your trigger is to accommodate the two round burst function that the AK-12 has which I understand it on the AN-94 when your action cycles fast enough the AK-74 action just simply does not cycle fast enough for the two round burst to make any sense and you end up wasting an extra shot. The magazine is a great addition but then when you pull forward to your handguard, this, it, it moves. So effectively this thing is not any good for laser IR units which means you degrade the night fighting capability by only allowing your soldiers to use white light on the front. And then if you move all the way to the front, uh, the gas block is actually harder to clean. It's a, there's permanently a fixed uh, structure right here and you have to pull the gas plug out in order to clean it. And there's actually a channel in here that you could get corrosive uh, materials stuck, which then lends to a vulnerability in the long-term servicing in combat conditions. Now, why this plug was not made into a gas regulator, again, is a disappointing feature. I feel like that's a, an opportunity missed on their part. And so a lot of this, it just seems like an AK-74 made complicated, or rather an AK-74 attempt to clone a burial made complicated. So it's not necessarily bad per se, but it's a bucket of disappointments. But how is the accuracy with this free floated system? We shot the AK-12 initially with the holographic 1P87 sights. But to eliminate any doubts, we went back and shot the rifle with a primary arms GLX 10X scope with a chevron finite aiming point. The initial 9 shot groups mirrored the grouping shot with a holographic sight. While the rifle printed its best group at 2.25 MOA on an 80% group, and on a separate target, a 2.91 MOA overall 9 shot group for the best overall grouping. However, with all of the groupings considered, the AK-12 averaged a 3 MOA 80% group and a 4.1 MOA full 9 shot group. This is very comparable to an AK-74 rifle's accuracy. But to further validate these results, Kalashnikov Concern, who makes the AK-12, shot a 10 shot grouping that extended from 90mm to 130mm at 100m. This translates to roughly a 3.09 MOA at 90% cluster and a 4.47 MOA of an overall grouping. Very comparable to what we see here. Now one more thing to note. The dust cover does not hold zero. The last three groupings we shot 
the dust cover was removed and replaced before every series. Now if you combine the targets on a singular plane, this isn't exactly scientific per se, but there is an indeed 3.4 MOA estimate impact shift between removing and attaching dust covers. But let's see if the target was able to perform any better on the short range recoil test. First impressions. Let's go check it out. Well, I don't know. It kind of feels like an AK. All right, here we are with our target. We've got one, two, three, four in the Charlie zone. The rest of it's in the alphas. Looks like a pretty decent group for a you know military issue, kind of standard 545 Kalash based system. It is over gassed. You still get that movement of the piston kind of sharp snaps against you and it does cause the optic to move. Now when I think about this in comparison to the modernized AK-74 with the Zenico rails and kit, I mean honestly uh, it kind of feels about the same when I'm shooting them. I don't notice any material difference in the recoil, in how the guns weigh. In fact this actually feels like quite heavy to me in comparison to a more slimmed down AK setup, uh, which I would consider this slimmed down in its current configuration. Uh, so yeah, when I'm shooting it next to a 74, I don't feel that much of a material difference to shooting them side by side. When I think about this compared to something that's gas checked, the AK Niner, the Alpha Trainer, both of those in 5.56 granted, but gas check systems, it's dramatically different. When we're pushing for performance, it's something that Henry and I are after. When we're looking for suppressibility of the system, it's something that we're paying more attention to. In a military application, maybe you want that over gas setup so that you have some of the increased reliability that the AK is more known for. So how does this set of characteristics point to the AK-12 as the major devolution of the Russian Kalashnikov family of rifles? Russia has a lot of corrosive ammunition. There is also no word or description for corrosive ammunition outside of the small arms expert circles, and even then, it's only referred to as corrosive primers. While corrosive primed ammunition perform better in adverse environments, cold climates, and are more stable to store, despite Russia's latest munition productions to be non-corrosive, it never actively purged corrosive ammunition from their old stock. While this directly boosted the amount of ammunition that Russia had on hand, the nature of it, corroding ferrous and steel objects unless cleaned off, presents the Russian military with a doctrinal requirement for a much more frequent cleaning of weapons when compared to NATO that only issues non-corrosive ammunition. In the case of the AK-12, multiple nooks and crannies collect gunk, and it is significantly harder to clean the AK-12. Okay, so here we are with a field stripped AK-12. Let's go over a few of the vulnerabilities for corrosive ammunition use on this particular model. And it's unique to the AK-12 uh, series. Uh, the first one is a very fancy muzzle device, quick detach and all that. Um, but this channel right here is a, an area of consideration. It's very difficult to get tools within this channel and so this would likely build up rust. Another part, you're looking at the gas block right here. The issue with a gas system is that this is non-detachable. You'll see it, it's welded in right here. And so right here where the lip forms between the gas tube and the gas block, this is very difficult to clean from the rear end and actually very difficult to clean from the front end even if I'm using something like a pick like this. There's a secondary channel on the inside right around here that could be difficult to get small tools into, but you've got a small pick that comes in your uh, cleaning kit. Which, this on the AK-100 series, so I've got my AK-105 right here, to contrast against is 
a lot easier to clean because if you take this apart and you are able to remove the gas tube, which means that gives you open access right here to clean underneath, which is similar to that lip right here, except you have it detached and you can clean it. Whereas this one, you cannot detach it. And this lip is very difficult to clean out. Uh, now, a few things on that note. The typical AK-12, now this is probably an early model. It looks like the gas tube was not chromed yet. Subsequent models from this, and I checked with Rifle Dynamics, their early model also did not have a chromed, uh, a chrome lined gas tube. Subsequent models have a chrome lined gas tube, a chrome lined gas block, a chrome lined gas plug, and this front section, including the barrel and within the cup and the uh, block itself is chrome lined. Now that does help with corrosion resistance. It does not corrode proof your system. I mean, just because it's chromed does not mean it does not rust. It's still rust. It just prolongs the time till it gets to rusting. So as a soldier, you have more time to get into a lull of combat to clean your rifle if you're using corrosive ammunition. Now, I will say they also did update their cleaning kit. Uh, but I mean, this is also a point of uh, frustration for me. The AK-74 slash AK-105 cleaning kit, like this one, if you actually take it apart, the cleaning kits, the internals, what they include is exactly the same. The flathead, the brush, the pick, and the, um, the jab. Your cleaning rods is segmented right here, whereas the cleaning rod is one piece, which is, again, the same thing. So there really wasn't a lot of advancement there. Maybe the oiler was one thing. You have an oiler, but that hardly keeps enough cleaning solution within to do anything. So that's my question. I'm not entirely sure why they designed it so poorly for corrosive ammunition use. And I've got to emphasize this. That this is not typical that you see Kalashnikov Concern or Ishmash design rifles that don't have a good consideration for any shortcomings or parameters that they're trying to design around. Um, for instance, the AKV 521, actually a much better design than, than this, in my opinion. Um, at the very least with that, the hinge design, you didn't have to deal with taking your dust cover off every single time you cleaned, which you also had your wandering zero with this type of dust cover design in the first place, which is probably also why they had to use a gas plug instead of a, an adjustable gas valve for the front, because it would induce even more potentially corroding points on this particular design. So I'd like to be wrong. If you know that there's any other reason for these design choices, please let us know. But this is what we see so far. The goal of modernization is to fight at night and use optics to enhance a soldier's lethality. Neither were achieved with the AK-12. In fact, the dust cover has a wandering zero. The AK-12 is essentially a Polish Burial Vizor 96, except it was created 25 years later, has a treble holding zero, and its iron sights are mounted on the dust cover that has trouble holding zero. The handguard cannot support night vision use with IR lasers without losing zero. And at the end of the day, many of the AK-12 modernizations have always been answered with a modernized AK-74M wearing aftermarket rails and kits. Not that it matters anyways, because it appears that optics, lasers, lights, and night vision devices are not coming in the first place. Being issued a slick AK-12 would functionally be an AK-74 with more snag points, with a wandering zero, after you fervently try to clean any corrosive ammunition residue that's accumulated from the last multiple combat missions, then may be corroding your gas port, causing premature wear. The Russian ground troops default to a heavy mechanized infantry operation, so the life of a Russian soldier is very intimate with a BMP or BTR infantry fighting vehicle's cramped walls. 
While the AK-12 stock folds, the lack of a front hook presents the stock with a wide angle to snag onto harnesses. We're also unsure why the burst mechanism was insisted. Firstly, and obviously, there isn't a balanced recoil system on the 12. While the recoil is low, it is still quite difficult to land two shots on target. When you do manage both hits, it's not precise, though there's always going to be a significant deviation that gets worse at range. The selector is tight in a way that causes you sometimes to use too much force, and miss full auto, or burst fire. It's a real pain, and I hope I've articulated how really annoying the selector is. Had the designers been allowed to omit the pointless two burst, or had been allowed to go with a more interesting selector design, this wouldn't have been a problem. And no, I'm not going to elaborate how I know the fault isn't on the designers at Kalishnikov, but feel free to speculate on how I know. Uh, the selector stop is significantly smaller than other AKs, which means you could just do this and just completely override the selector off the gun. They are doing this in the field because I have seen pictures of captured AK-12s, uh, including their previous owners, where the selector has completely, you could tell they got into fucking combat and they went, oh fucking sh balls and just slammed their selector all the way down to try to engage and uh, overrode the selector off the side of the gun. We question whether there was a feedback loop present with Russian soldiers who actually use these rifles. In the early 2000s, the US was faced with a very same problem set of modernizing its forces for night fighting, and thus the M4 Block 1 was born. The flat top M4 solved the optical mounting problem with a 1960s reliable base design rifle with an integrated top rail. When the US Special Operations Command was presented with the FN SCAR-16 as its potential new successor to the M4, it rejected the early SCAR based on reliability and fragility issues. Because I took part in the final trials for this rifle back in 2007, we compiled a final report and literally I sat in on the meeting where he talked about the attributes of this rifle and basically it was deemed that this was not better than the M4A1 and therefore guys did not feel the need to switch to the SCAR as it did not have any significant improvements over the M4 to you know, warrant its you know, replacement of the M4 and put into combat use. Rather, SOCOM proceeded to adopt the M4 Block II the very same rifle with a more updated rail to better integrate night fighting capabilities. So in an alternate reality, instead of spending the funds to develop an AK-12, the much more economical and effective alternative would be the FSB Spetsnaz type AK-74s with Zenico and SureShot aftermarket kits were certainly more available, much cheaper and battle tested to modernization solutions but entirely ignored. The Russian small arms development has always been very objective driven, meaning that they always plan for a specific goal. With the M43 or 7.62x39 cartridge, they succeeded to use an effective universal cartridge for the infantry. For with the AK-74, they succeeded to increase lethality and decrease carrying weight. With the Dragunov SVD, they succeeded with a lightweight semi-auto sniper rifle that used the same cartridge as their machine guns and had an effective range to 800 meters, the world's most advanced sniper rifle of that era. With the AK-74M and AK-100 series, Ishmash was able to streamline their model offerings into a full line they use minimal parts exchanges, massively decreasing operational costs in parts inventory. But today, with the current AK-12, it's a rifle packed with poorly designed modernization features, like a folding collapsible stock that is full of snag points, a dust cover optic mount with a wandering zero, internal designs that are vulnerable to corrosive ammunition in the military inventory, a selector that could block the trigger mechanism, a free-floating handguard that doesn't enhance accuracy and cannot support active night vision aiming with IR lasers. 
in a project that's drained the government of further funds to rather modernize the current AK-74M with far cheaper and more effective rails. The FSB Spetsnaz units, with their Zenitco and SureShot kitted out AK-100 series, had literally answered the question of modernization. Much like Knight's armament and Daniel Defense, modernizing the M4 into the Block 1 and the Block 2. In fact, Zenitco recently developed a rail to help modernize the AK-12 for IR aiming devices, the exact same way you would modernize an AK-74M. Which leads us to wonder, what was the point of the AK-12 after all then? We've made some new merch. You'll see under slateblackindustries.com that we've dropped some sweet patches. We've released the Enemy at the Gate Sniper Dual Pair, with Vasily written on the Mosinagant Sniper and Koenig on the Car 98K Sniper. These patches directly help the funding of our channel and we have limited stock on hand, so get them while they last. <laughs> Не горят, не трак погасла. Водаю. Рус. 